Hey guys, Joe here, your favorite guy on this channel. Well, unless you like Daniel more than me, put it down in the comments. Anyways, I'm going to show you something real quick, and I want you to identify what today's subject is. Only a real gun guy would know. I mean, other than the fact that it says Walter right on the, uh, the thing, which we will discuss in a minute. That's right. Today we are taking a look at a Walter. Walter, 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 however you pronounce it. I say Walter. This one is borrowed from Liberty Arms. Check them out. Harrisonburg, Virginia. I told Daniel down there, hey, pick me out three guns at random. Let me check them out. And this was one of them. And it's kind of cool and not something I normally would pick out. So I appreciate that. It is available for sale. I didn't see the price tag, but uh, let's say it's a million dollars. If you have a million dollars, you should buy this thing. Comes in a black hard case. Well, a lot of Walters do. Inside there, we do have Le Far Homme. Let's go ahead and clear it, make sure that it is empty. It does not have a slide lock that you can manually engage, so the magazine, it locks open and then stays open until you re-rack it. But as you can see, nothing in it, nothing in it. Let's go ahead and drop the slide on this and take a look at the Walter PK380. It's on their budget end of firearms and it's chambered in 380 ACP. Now, a lot of people will tell you that 380 is on its way out. I say the nay. There are a lot of people out there that still tell you that 380 is an effective cartridge. And if you have the right round, they're not wrong. A 95 grain hollow point can do a lot of damage and go through a lot of material. So pick your ammo right and it can still be a viable cartridge. On top of that, I've never been shot with anything other than a BB gun, but something tells me that if you shoot me with a 95 grain 380 ACP, probably going to stop whatever the hell I was doing when you shot me. Hopefully. Yes. So this one is a polymer frame steel or steel aluminum. We'll double check that when we take it apart, but metal upper hammer fired, uh, no trigger safety. I almost said single action, but it's double action, single action gun. And again, it is single stack chambered in 380 ACP European style paddle release which does actually allow it to become ambidextrous very easily a lot of guns nowadays you do have to reverse the mag release that is not the case with the walter here and hk like to do that with a lot of their guns sadly a lot of manufacturers have gone to the more traditional american style push button here heels were very popular back in the day 1911 let's just face it 1911 browning high power a lot of those guns uh, popularized the button release and HK and Walter were two of the last remaining holdouts. Let me know if there's other manufacturers that still do paddle release for the American market. Uh, overall, it's not a bad looking gun. It is, again, being a budget gun, it's a little bit on the rattlier side, but it's not something that would really bother me that much, especially if it's always in a holster. Unless you have like a Kydex and then you have the sound of it rattling around in there. Take it or leave it. Hammer fired with manual safety. Again, ambidextrous. A little bit backwards. Uh, up is for fire. Down is for safe. However, this one does have the party trick of at least being a firing pin block. Slide mounted safeties tend to block the firing pin while still allowing manipulation of the firearm, including the trigger. That's how you decock this pistol. I don't recommend it because you never know. You could have a failure of the firing pin block. You could have forgotten to reset the safety because it doesn't spring up like some guns do. What I would suggest is while it's on safe and you do want to start it in double action, you grab the hammer in your fingers and lower it gently, thus reducing the possibility of it accidentally firing the gun. Once you're released, you can engage it back into fire and you'll see the hammer will go all the way home. Or you can just leave it in safe and then flick it up before you use it. Talk about the trigger real quick. Again, if you do put it that way into double action, you're going to have a heavy pull as double action tends to be both on revolvers and straight double action pistols like the Sky. Pulls through at about nine and a quarter pounds and then you can see the break there is just releasing it. That's all there is to it. Hammer fired guns are usually pretty simple and easy to use. Once you've fired it, once the gun resets, you will go into single action mode and you'll see it is a much shorter trigger. A little bit of take up to the wall and 
break. Now, personally, since I'm a 1911 guy, how I would suggest it is you load the magazine in, get the hammer set, put it on safe, and put it in your holster. That way you'll always have a shorter trigger pull. Hammer is back, safety is on, gun is safe. This is safe, guys. Just practice. When you're sitting at home, make sure there's nothing in the gun. Take the mag out so you don't accidentally do anything. And just practice drawing and dropping the safety. Because it is backwards for me, it would probably be a little bit awkward for me. But I guess I could learn to pull and knuckle it up versus normally 1911s, you thumb them down. But the more you practice, the more proficient you'll get with that. But once you've gotten that down, the... Release is so much easier. Five and a half pounds on that one. It comes with an eight round magazine out of the box. I'm not a fan of this construction style. It does lead to multiple areas of potential failure, but it does seem to still be working in this particular gun and it drops freeze. Some of those were words. This particular example came with the laser in the box, which usually adds $120 to $200, depending on the manufacturer. This is the Walter branded laser. Very easy to snap in there. And as you can see, it is functional. And it does have lasers back here so that if it's in your holster, you can tell if it's on so you don't accidentally drain your batteries. Very easy to take on and off. You just pull down and pull off. Standard pick rail style, so you can put a different light source on there because this is just a laser. Don't look directly into the laser, kids. Uh, only has rear slide serrations, and honestly, with the safety back here, makes it a little bit easier to grab it anyway. If you have to, you can always just grab and pinch like a lobster and manipulate it that way. The reason why I wasn't 100% sure that this is a stainless slide is because of how easily it is to manipulate feels very airsofty. Honestly, I was messing with the Smith & Wesson airsoft gun last week, and it feels about the same. Not a fan of the billboard. I know like the 22 caliber Smith & Wesson MPs have them, and a lot of other manufacturers. I think that's gauche. I would just uh, probably paint that, to be honest. External extractor. It does have three dot night sights, which surprised me when I pulled it out of the box, but from what I read, that is actually factory for the gun. Not adjustable for elevation, but you could knock it around with a mallet. There is no identification plate molded into the frame, so you could replace the frame. Uh, it does have pins holding the fire control group in, but you can knock out those two pins, and it looks like you just pop the whole chassis out. Let's go ahead and take it apart before we do that. Let's go ahead and make sure she's empty. Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. And you are going to need your tool here. Don't lose it. It's very annoying if you do. You could get around it because it is just a slotted key. Uh, so technically you could use a pair of thin, strong tweezers. But once you've done that, you can just pull down. And you will see it does lock. So you, even though it is hammer fired, you do need to pull the trigger once we've done that, we can set that aside. Take your guide rod out. It is not captive, so be careful. Very thin and a light spring. Probably going to bark a little bit. Be prepared for that. It's not a big deal, but 380s tend to bark, uh, kick, recoil sharper. A lot of it has to come down to recoil systems. If it was double nested or a big spring, little spring, it would probably be a little bit softer shooting. But we're going for liability more than anything else. Pulling out the barrel. Uh, this one hasn't been cleaned in a while. Probably going to give her a clean before I give her back. But overall, the fit and finish still appears to be very nice. You can see it's definitely got some roundage because you can see how the finish is worn in there. A lot of lightning cut put in there. They took a lot of weight out of there. Uh, a lot of lower powered guns, 380s, 22s, etc., need a lighter slide and again very light um marginally heavier than the mag because uh well number one they don't need to contain as much pressure but number two because cycling issues can arise if you don't have a light enough slide that's why you don't see a lot of optics ready 22s and 380s uh Aside from like the Taurus and the Sig, which have different barrel styles. But yeah, overall it feels okay. It's just, again, it feels it feels cheaper than the name suggests. The frame, on the other hand, 
weighs twice as much as the slide and feels very beefy indeed. Very generous rails. Again, it's a chassis system style, so you knock out the roll pins, you take it out, you can put it into a different frame if this frame gets damaged because the serial number is right there and not integral to the frame. I prefer to see that. It allows things to be uh, changed a lot easier. Let's go ahead and put it back together. Stupidest thing, obviously, is that stupid key. But if, again, you lose it, you can always replace it with just a really strong set of pliers. This always takes a little bit of finesse because you have to wiggle this in there just right. I hate non-recoiled springs or non-captive springs just for this one individual reason. So use two hands if you must. More modern guns have done away with this style, and uh, yeah, there's a, there's a very good reason for that. Oh my goodness, come on. And you can't pre-compact them, which is one thing I hate. You know, I'm going to come back because doing it on camera almost always fails. Okay, that literally took me almost five minutes. And for someone like me who has really bad nerve damage, and possibly for those of you out there that might have weakened hands or anything like that, this could be a deal breaker. Not just on this gun. I believe I showed it on the stance. These non-captive guide rods and springs that have super long springs that require all kinds of stupid-ass manipulations to get them back into place... That can be a deal breaker for guys like us. So keep that in mind if you are looking at this. If you have any kind of nerve damage or problems with your hands for manipulation and fine control, this gun might not be for you. For everybody else, I'm sure it's fine. It's also really freaking annoying. I know it's an older design, so I'll forgive it for that. But if I were to buy a new gun, such as the Savage Stance, you can check out that video up there. Uh, I would not accept that at all, 100% ever ever. Anyways, once you get it back into position, go ahead and make sure that the takedowns go back into the up position. Turn your key back so that it's this way and rack your slide to make sure you're back in functionality. So what do I think of the PK380? Well, outside of its recoil spring, I think it might actually be a fun little shooter. If it's still around, maybe I'll take it to the range and shoot it. If it winds up selling, hey, maybe one of you guys bought it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave those down below. I try to answer as many of them as I can. I really enjoy making these videos, and I hope you guys enjoy watching them. Please keep coming back for more. Please, please. And uh, tell all your friends, buddies, enemies, and all the like about it. Uh, growing the channel has been difficult, and I'm trying. Thank you guys so much for coming along. And we will obviously try to continue to grow it together. So come back for another video. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, I'll talk to you later.